Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam in mabat Continue on in our study of Arba'in al-Nawawi By Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him with jannah to Firdaus Ameen, a great Imam Faqih uh, we reach the second hadith, and, and again, in order for to make it simple and make it easy, we'll go through the text, and we'll go through some of the benefits of the hadith. You know, we're not going to get into, there's many uh, explanations as you study, as you go, uh, as you read, you'll find many, many in detailed explanations. There's in English and all kind of different languages, alhamdulillah. So the second hadith is a famous hadith, the Hadith of Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam. It's also known as the Hadith of Jibreel. And this is because Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam, he came while the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasalam, and some of his companions were sitting. He came, and then he asked questions about Islam, and about Iman, and about Ihsan. And we're going to talk about all those things. So we'll probably sit and have the, uh, study this hadith over a couple of sittings. عن عمر بن الخطاب عن عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه قال بينما نحن جلوس عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اطلع علينا رجل شديد بياض الثياب شديد السواد الشعر لا يرى عليه أثر السفر ولا يعرف منا أحد حتى جلس للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فسند ركبتيه إلى ركبتيه ووضع كافيه على فخذيه وقال يا محمد so, Umar bin al-Khattab he said, he said, we were sitting, while, while we were sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a, a man came to us, and he had very white garments, you know, very white clothes, a very white thobe on, and his hair was very, very black. What color was his thobe? Very white. Barakallahu feek. And his hair was very, very black. And they noticed they couldn't see any signs of traveling on him. Because here they're in the desert. They're in the desert. And they didn't see any signs that he had been traveling. So anytime you see a traveler, especially before and in places where you don't have travel, uh, people traveling, if they travel by horse, they travel by camel, they travel by mule, they travel by some other riding animal, usually you get dirty when you travel. And even if you travel by car and plane, and you travel a long distance, you get tired and you get dirty. So they were really surprised. This man had very black hair <coughs> and he had very white garments. His garments didn't, and we couldn't see any sign of traveling. It didn't look like he'd been traveling. And none of us knew him. And then he sat next to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he put his, uh, his knees next to the knees of the Prophet. And he put his hands on the Prophet's thighs. So here's a man, they didn't even know him. He, came, he just came up to them and he had a very nice white thobe. So they didn't know him, so then he has to be a traveler. And then he came and the, the scholars, they say that the way he sat, the Prophet was sitting, and he put his, he came and he sat like this to the Prophet. And then he put his hands on the Prophet Sallallahu thighs. You would think that was very strange if you didn't know someone. And someone just comes up and they put their hands on your thighs. Wouldn't you? You'd think that was kind of strange. So this was something strange to the Sahaba. And he said, then he said, he said, O oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam. So he asked the Prophet Sallallahu tell me about Islam. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمَ الْإِسْلَامُ أَنْ تَشْهَدَ إِنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهُ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ رَسُولُ اللَّهُ وَتُكِيمُ الصَّلَاةُ وَتُوْتِيُ الزَّكَاءُ وَتُصَوْمُ رَمَضَانُ وَتَحَجَّ الْبَيْتِ إِنْ اسْتَطَعْتَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi then answered him. He said, Islam is to bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. Except Allah. And that Muhammad is his last messenger, is the last messenger of Allah. And pray five times a day, you know, establish the prayer, pay the zakat, 
fast Ramadan and make the sacred pilgrimage to Mecca, make Hajj. If you're able to do so, then he said, if you're able to do so, this is very important. And that's a part, we, we learn from that, that Hajj is not wajib upon everyone. For right now, Hajj is not wajib on you if you cannot do it. Okay? For one, you're too young and you're too young to make Hajj. Uh, you, you can get Ajr for Hajj, but you are not required to make Hajj yet. You don't have to until you get older, old enough, to you become mature. And if you're mature and you don't have the money or you don't have, if you're a woman and you don't have someone to take you, then it's not an obligation upon you. You don't, you don't, you don't have to. It's not watching that. Huh? Uh -huh. Or health, of course. So this, that's what we benefit from that. So Jibreel, <clears throat> I mean, the Prophet ﷺ said, if you're able to do so, if you're able to make the Hajj, then the man said, uh, Jibreel, but they thought it was a man, they didn't know it was Jibreel. He said, You've spoken rightly. Then the Sahaba, they were amazed. They were amazed because he said, how can this guy, he came up and he asked the Prophet Sallallahu and then he said, you spoke the truth. How does he know it's the truth? Okay, so then they were surprised. They were surprised that he would ask and then he would say, you've spoken rightly. Qal, then he said, فَخْبِرْنِي عَنَ الْإِمَانِ Tell me about Iman. Qal, تُؤْمِنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَكُتُوبِهِ وَرُسُولِهِ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ then the Prophet ﷺ said, A man is to believe in Allah and to be Billahi wa malaika and the angels and wa malaika ti wa kutubi and his books, meaning the Quran, the Bible, the original Bible, the original Torah or Torah, which came to Musa والسلام, or Moses the books of Psalm, uh, of David or Dawood, all of these books, the Zabur, uh, the Suhuf of Ibrahim, Wa Musa, all of these books that came before uh, are a part of our Iman. We believe in them as Muslims. So these are the six pillars of Iman. He said, So he said, and believing in the angels, believing in the books, and believing in the messengers, all the prophets and messengers, alayhim after salatu wa salam, will the yawm al-akhir, and the day of judgment, we believe that we're going to die, and we're going to be resurrected. Every single one of us in this room is going to die. You're going to die by yourself. No one can stop the death, your death. And you'll be ra raised on the day of judgment, yawm al-qiyamah, you'll be raised up and you'll be questioned about how you lived in this life. Did you do good? Did you do bad? All those things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, raise you up. And we believe in that. That's a part of Iman. And we believe in the Qadr, the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that everything happens for a reason, that everything happens according to Allah's knowledge. His ilm, nothing escapes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his knowledge. He knows everything. He wrote everything. He. Uh, so he has knowledge of everything. He wrote everything. There's four maratib al-qadr. Four levels of the qadr. Kitaba, which is uh, that Allah wrote it. Al-ilm, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge of everything. And uh, al-mashiyah, that everything happens in the will of Allah, according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will. So you can't do anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's nothing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not willed. And there's two types of will, and we'll talk about that maybe another time, but there are things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. There are things that he decreed, everything he decreed, the good and the bad. And that's what we say, the qadri, khayri yu ashar, the good and the bad of the qadr. That sometimes some, someone you love, they die. Sometimes you love Hareira, we loved Hareira, Hareira died, he fell off the balcony. Sometimes somebody does something very bad to you. 
All of that is the qadr of Allah. All of that is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah is not happy with all of those things. So then a part of that is what's called uh, al ayat sharia or al mashia sharia or mashia koniya. Meaning that there are things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed or there are things if it is related to the sharia to things that Allah loves then it's it is what Allah loves meaning the fact that you're Muslims Allah loves this some people are disbelievers Allah doesn't love that but he gives them the choice he gives them the choice imma kafirin wa imma what is what is the, the ayah oh imma shakura no so either being thankful or being unthankful, ungrateful, and disbelieving. Being grateful with belief in Iman. So, that's a little bit about the decree, uh, the uh, decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, he said, Qala Sadaq, so Jibreel again said, you spoke rightly, you spoke the truth. Qala akhbirni al ihsan. Then he said, and tell me about ihsan. So we'll stop there until the next time that we sit and we'll continue because it's a very long hadith. So we'll probably sit and it'll probably take us two or three sittings inshallah ta'ala and we'll hopefully benefit from it. But we'll, we'll stop there and we ask of all the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ilm and nafiyah.